good evening, my brothers and sisters. God bless you on this evening. Uh, this is Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. Uh, I believe it's June, uh, 25th, 26th, June 27th. June 27th. And we are so glad to have you uh, joining in with us for this uh, Bible study on this evening. Uh, we thank God for our leader this evening, Pastor Frankie, Frankie Walls and our First Lady, Lady Tina Walls. We give God glory for, for them, for, for these powerful leaders, and uh, we pray that the Lord will continue to bless them. Uh, and if they bless them, then the blessings will fall down on us, the congregation as well. All right, God bless you. Let me just open up with a word of prayer. God, we thank you today for your for life, for health, and for strength. And, oh, God, for how you have brought us this far. And we pray, oh, God, that you will present yourself in the presence of the word, of your words, so that somebody problems will be healed. Somebody's problems will be solved in the name of Jesus as it pertains to the subject of the sin of greed. We give you glory and honor in your name we pray. Amen. Greed. I tell you what, uh, I, first of all, you'll see on the board here that our subject is the sin of greed. The sin of greed. And you know sin is one of the most prevalent uh, issues that we face today in the world, but regretfully also in the church, which is where it has no business, it has no place, it shouldn't have any place in the church. But let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, it is in the church Yes, greed is in the church for money, for power, all this. And you see it. You can't help but see it. Even if you don't even have an ounce of salvation in your, in, your, in your life, you can still see how greed is affecting the church. And this is one of the things that make you wonder about the realness of, of the church, the sincerity of the church. But let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, even though greed is for real, but you know what? God is real. God is real. And God, uh, he has people who are in the church who are fighting this thing called the sin of greed. Well, amen. And we need to... Uh, Take, um, make sure that we uh, hold, take hold of that issue, and uh, let's work, um, let's work with, let's work with it uh, as we try to help to destroy this sin in the world, but really in the church. God bless you. Now I've got some before I get into. Um, any, any of the uh, text here, I, I want to read some verses to you. And those verses are listed. Uh, each one of them is on the board here as to where they can be found. Now, I'm not going to read all of them, but if you look at the board, you will know exactly where to go to read about the sin of greed and what the sin of greed causes in our lives. I'm going to start reading with 1 Kings chapter 21. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 22. That's 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 22. I'm going to give you a second to pull it up so you can read along with me. All right, and here is what it says. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, 
king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee, I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it to me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not eat bread, would not eat no bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is it thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme, thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto, unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And then came then there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme, did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession 
of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he is gone, whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast said that because I'm sorry, thou hast said thyself, have sold thyself, I'm sorry, thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is set up and left in Israel and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam Jeroboam the son of Nebat, Nebat and like the house of Basha the son of Ahijah for the provocations wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. That particular passage, 1 Timothy 21, 1 through 22, I needed to read to you because that's going to become important in just a minute uh, as we explain to you about the sin of greed. And as I read it, I'm sure you've already gotten the major hit the major hint, rather, of what we're talk, what we're going to be talking about this evening. Now, I want to run down here, skip down to Luke chapter twelve, verses All right, Luke, chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. I'm having a hard time here trying to. Okay, here we go. And he said, this is the word, these are the words of Jesus. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the of, of the things which he possess, uh, possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? because I have no room where to bestow my uh, fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my, thy, all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul? 
Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thou shalt be required Thy soul, I'm sorry, thy soul, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Those two passages I wanted to read to you particularly, and the others, you, they're listed on the board here. You can pick them up, and you can read them yourself at your leisure, and they are all uh, uh, related to what we're talking about on this evening. The sin of greed. Our central verse this evening is, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 21, and it says, and this is the uh, King James Version, and I'm going to share with you the, uh, the NIV Version, and, uh, which I think is, uh, is clearer. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own soul, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Now, here's the NIV Version. The greedy bring, uh, I'm sorry, the greedy bring ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. Isn't that clearer? Let me read it again. The greedy brings ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. Now that's Proverbs 15 and 27, and I read to you both versions of that. The root cause the root cause of all human misery is greed, mm -hmm. self-centeredness, and corruption. Let me say that again. The, 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 the root cause of all human misery is greed, self-centeredness, and corruption. Now, I want you to, the, the lesson today is so lined out that um, it really speaks for itself, and I'm going to allow it. I'm not, everything that I say to you uh, is directly from the text because it is written in so much simplicity until everything here is what uh, an individual would normally say without even uh, the lesson in front of them. So we're going to use the this uh, uh, to, uh, to my, I'm going to use it to my advantage. Let me put it that way. Greed is selfish. Greed is selfish. It's stingy. Mm -hmm. But God is not uh, is not broke, and God is not stingy. Uh, did, did I say that right? Uh, greed is selfish and stingy, but God is not broke, nor is he stingy. You need to grasp that in your mind right now. So it didn't come from God. Uh, 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 uh. It did not come from God. But it came from who? Satan himself. He wanted everything for himself. Greed, let me see, and this is, and I think, I, yeah, it's on the board, is one of the seven most deadly sins in the Bible. One of the seven, that's powerful, y'all. One of the seven most deadly sins in the Bible. The other six are pride, lust, wow, gluttony, 
sloth, anger, and envy. Price, I'm sorry, pride, lust, gluttony, sloth, sloth, anger, and envy. What does the desire for greed, uh, uh, for, for uh, 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 the, what, what, what is the sin of greed in addition to what I've already said? It's the desire for material wealth or gain. It's just that simple. And I'm going to talk to you something in, in just a minute uh, about uh, there's nothing wrong with wanting with wanting money, but you got to have the right frame of mind. And it, it must not be, some, you must not let that take, uh, uh, take advantage of, take over you, take in, be in charge of you. You be in charge of it. I hope that was plain. And I'm, and I'm trying, I'm trying to bring up words here. Um, that are just lying there, and I and they won't come up. But you understand. <laughs> okay. So we're still. It's it, 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 it's right there. It's included with uh, uh with, and, and I just told you pride, lust, that stuff there. So that's important. Now, these sins lead to other things, other sins, y'all. Yes, it does. These sins, other sins, which are more deadly and vicious than they are, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 than uh, they actually are. They're very deadly uh, 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 sins, which are so more deadly. Pride will prevent you from say it again loudly. For you, okay, all right. Right, it gets in trouble. You get in trouble with that. All right. So it's a sin directly against one's neighbor. A sin. It's a sin against God. Yes, it's it's a mortal sin. Elder, Mr. Jackson, it's a mortal sin. Um, have to be careful, my brothers and sisters, about how you uh, obtain things that you get and then make a God out of it because you will get to the point where those things you're going to be wanting more and more and more and more just to have it. Did I say just to have it? Yes, just to have it. You want to gloat about it. You want to uh, uh, um, you know, be 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 proud about it. You wanna you wanna use it as a as a tool for uh, uh, ruling, uh, as a tool for uh, making uh, using others. Uh, what what do you call that? Um, words won't come with me right now, but. Anyway, in other words, it causes you, it makes you want to use people. It causes you to want to use people. That's what I'm trying to say, but that's not, those are not the words I want to use. Now, manipulate, that's it. That's what I'm trying to say. Manipulate, that is the word I'm looking for. Uh, greed is the desire for material wealth or gain, ignoring the realm of the spiritual. Greed is intense. It's intense, and and it's selfish. Uh, uh, and selfish desires 
for something, especially wealth, power, or food. Isn't that something you could even do? <laughs> oh my God! I, did you all did you all know that greed, uh, uh, when it comes to food, can be a major problem for you? And then we're talking about covetousness, wanting your brother's wife. And God, now I, mean, I just use that one as an example. There are other things that are examples of covetousness. And then God uh, um, commanded that men should not covet their belongings. Uh, that, uh, let me repeat that. Not covet that which belongs to another brother. I hope I'm making sense. It is the last of the Ten Commandments. Isn't that something? And that's it. And, and you can look that up in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5 and 21, and you'll see what it says. So because the word of the Lord tells the, the, the believer that life does not consist in the abundance of things that a man possesses. So you got to be on your guard for grasping for more things. Now, the believer must be aware that the love of money is the root of all evil. He, and, and he's got to be careful that his desire for wealth and riches does not lead him down the wrong path and cause him to fall into the traps of the devil. The hunger for money will cause you to to wander from the faith, it will cause you to become trapped in the devil's schemes. Whoa! I'm this, this is I'm this is in the church, y'all. This is in the church, and it's not wrong. Now, and, and as I said before, it's not wrong to desire money. For God told us uh, uh, in the Bible that, that and done in, in that same book of Deuteronomy that he has given the believers the power to get wealth so that his covenant can be established. But when, a belief, when you become so obsessed with acquiring wealth it, it, and you're going to sell your soul to the devil and do anything to get it, then you become a severe problem. Come on, Sister Jackson. Is it working? Okay, you. I want you to hold, remember what you're going to say because I want the audience to hear this. Is it working now, Elder? Yes. Okay. Is that in regards to spiritual wealth? when God said he wants you to be wealthy. I mean, there are a lot of different um, verbiage that's used in the Bible. Mm -hmm. and sometimes the words that are said are not the exact thing that we're used to seeing. Because when you're clothed with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and you're walking towards God, like the things of the world, yes, you need a house. Yes, you need a car. Right. Yes, you need you know food and things right. like that. But you are seeking God and right. to develop your treasures with him yeah. and create a place for you. So in my mind, when you're saying, when, when you read the scripture, I'm thinking when God wants us to be wealthy, if we have him, that's all we need. Okay. Everything else is just going to fall into place. But when we're looking for objects and things of the world, and we're seeking that more than him, that's, that's the, the trouble mm -hmm. starting to spawn. Right. So exactly. my thought is, is that in line with the teachings of the Bible? Yeah, th this particular passage does have to do with naturally money. Okay. It does not have to, do, have to, to deal with what, with uh the wealth of the in the spiritual realm. Okay. Because you'll never get enough of that. 
and you seek more and more. But you don't seek it in order to, to uh, control your brother or your sister. You, you, that, that's wrong. That's the wrong spirit right there. But you acquire more and more and more because it blesses you and it's for you. So you will never get enough of God. But you can get enough of these natural money and, and uh, uh, all these other uh, um, wealths. And you can use, you can be so involved in them until actually they will get your mind off of uh, uh, the spiritual wealth. Did that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, here's an important point. That elder, did you want to say something? Oh, here's an important point that 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 I I'm really applies to everybody across the board, and that is that greed is the primary reason that so many people are in debt. Greed. Find all those things you don't need. That you don't need and also that uh, uh, that are out of your that are above your income level. Wow. That's dangerous. It's, and that's greed. That's good. That's the primary reason. You know, greed is the primary reason for those things happening. Credit makes it very convenient. It does. To indulge in that greed. It makes it very <laughs> <laughs> have what you want now yeah and now i mean that it creates hardships and and and, and, and it creates grief for so many people uh, uh jesus cautioned us <clears throat> please excuse me jesus cautioned us about being a hoarder and i, I and and uh, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm still got to come out of that hoarder thing, because if you if you look with what's in my storage bin, I got to go through there and just get rid of stuff, you know. <laughs> but, but Jesus cautioned us against being a hoarder, and He said, "Do not lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth." And I just read that scripture to you. The moth and rust. Destroy and where thieves break in and steal everything. And when they break in and steal everything, you just as mad as you can be, and you know you're not even using that stuff. Hoarder. But store up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven. Huh? Where where moth and duck and rust don't destroy. That's what I was explaining to you just a moment ago. When you, when you obtain that spiritual wealth, that's good. You, yeah, yeah. So, and 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 it, uh, rust and moth can't destroy that. Amen. And where Amen. thieves do not break in, thieves thieves can't break in and th and steal it. My God, my God. Now, we are greedy for several things, which includes money. Here I go again. Sex and positions of power. I'm talking about, you don't even have to go outside the church. And I know I'm saying a whole lot of stuff, but it's for real. You don't even have to go outside of the church to even witness this. And that's a sad thing. That's sad. Greed, greediness, greediness, or let me put it this way, greed, that, that, that includes money, sex, and positions of power. In the church, people are fighting for positions and souls are dying and going to hell. We spend more time fighting for positions than we do out there witnessing and bringing souls to Christ.
And it doesn't stop. It seems to be an appetite for more and more. And, 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 it, and it's been accepted. In some circles, even in the church, it's been accepted. I remember, and I don't mind sharing this, uh, and some of them, they're friends, yes, they're friends, Elder. Uh, but they're, friend, they're persons who, they're evangelists who have, who, who have done revivals and they go from place to place in the country. And when they get together, they brag on how much money they raised. They brag on how much money they made for themselves. And they won't even come to you uh, uh, unless the number is the right number. What I mean by that, the right amount. Isn't that something? This is in the church now where we're supposed to be winning souls. We have put a price on ministering to people. I, I, and I know in the Bible when Peter and all of them, Jesus told them, say, don't you worry about nothing when you get there. The people, they're going to take care of you. And, it, and, 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 and that still exists now. That the people will take care of you. And I know this is a modern time. This is a different time. And, uh, and we now, for the most part, depend on, you know, the, the funds that people give you to make. And uh, I mean, to, uh, to do things that you need to do in your ministry. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you use it, when you use that for your own personal good, for the wrong thing, let me put it that way, that's wrong. That is wrong. You know, uh, um, Preaching the word of God is not a money thing or is not a greed, shouldn't be a greed thing. Shouldn't be a, a situation where if you don't give me a certain amount of money, I'm not coming. That does exist. Yea, even in the church. My God. But you know what? The Lord wants us, the people of God, to cry out against greed. He wants us to do that. And it's, you know, uh, and let me go back to the power thing. We, and you are so greedy until, uh, until others, I mean, you, you st you'll steal the money. Uh-huh. And I've, I've known it to happen. In the church, you steal the money. You use it to pay for your, uh, uh, you steal money so that you can pay for your, uh, um, what them things called? Yeah, that too, but I'm, 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 I'm the, my, the, um, the expensive cars. <laughs> Bent Bentleys and, and, and what's the other one? But yeah, yeah. And then when you get behind and can't pay, then you have to go and steal some money from your church treasure to pay for it. Whoa. Greed will do that. That's the sin of greed. I hope I'm giving some good example. And I know things are not coming out of my mouth the way that they should. But please bear with me. I, 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 I want to... He, he, God wants us to cry, to cry out against greed. And you know why? Because it alienates us from God. It, it, it causes contention between brothers and sisters. Yes, it does. And it breaks down the unity of the church. And y'all know it. You know it does because you, uh, money can tear up a church you might as well stick a match to it and burn it down. That's what greed will do, and the, and and the wrong and the wrong use. Let me put it that way. 
the misuse, rather, of money can cause all kinds of problems, even in the ministry. What is the bottom line there? Greed. Somebody messed up somewhere. Oh, yes. I read for you 1 Kings 21, 1 through 22. And it goes on further than the 22nd verse. Um, and it talks about Ahab uh, um, uh, being upset because Naboth wouldn't give him his, his vineyard. Well, and then you come up here with that, with that wicked woman, Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Who wrote? I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna. So <laughs> here we got Ahab the king. He had everything that he could desire, but he wanted more and more and more, y'all. He coveted neighbors' one nice vineyard. He, now here he is the king. He could have anything that he wanted. And yet, he desired even more. And here he coveted Nabal's one ninth vineyard because it was near him, and that vineyard, and Nabal's vineyard was dear to his heart. Nabal, no doubt, kept his vineyard up, looking nice. He had good, good fruit, good vegetables, and everything. On his and it was just it was desirable. And any any anybody uh, uh, keeping a good vineyard, uh, it, it, it's 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 appealing to others. I, I know that when I'm traveling from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa, and you go out down down 60, the Yeehaw Junction, and you look over and you see all of these strawberry. Form, farms. That stuff looks so good, especially when it's the time of year to pick strawberries. And you want to get out of your car and go and pick you some strawberries because they look that good. Huh? No doubt somebody near those persons are coveting their neighbor's strawberry vineyard. I'm using that as an example. Because if it looks good to me and I can't even afford it, you know it looks good to somebody who can. Am I making sense? So he asked neighbor to give him his vineyard and told me, I, I pay you for it. And when Naboth told him that he couldn't do that because that's that's uh, the inheritance from his father, he said so. And his aunts, and that made King Ahab mad. It made him so mad until he lost his appetite. He wouldn't even eat anything. But then that's when that devilish woman came. I'm sorry. That. Jezebel, that that, de that demonic woman, can't got to him and, no and noticing, hey, baby, why are you not eating? That's not like you. You are so sad. Why? And he told her why he was in the shape that he was in. She said, look, look, baby, you, you don't have to worry about nothing. I'm gonna take care of Naboth for you. You gonna have, aren't you the king? You're the king. You own all this, all of this belong to you. So you can have Naboth's vineyard if that's what you want. I tell you what, dry up. Dry your face up. And just get and, and and don't worry about a thing. I'm gonna take care of neighbor. Don't you worry about it. The devil is working. You see what you see what greed it, the, it will lead to. Uh, so what she does is she has uh, uh, um, um, 
to make, he, he to write. He, he wrote letters. She had well, actually she wrote the letters, and she um, what do you call it? Yeah, what do you call? Forged his name on all of the letters. Mm-hmm. And he she set up a plot to get neighbors by writing those letters in her husband's name. And she wrote the letters to the uh, to the elders and to the nobles and 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 neighbors city. So she got two of the enemies to bear false witness. <laughs> the devil is working against a believer to cause harm. And the witnesses said that neighbor had blasphemed God and the king. So that so 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 that. Uh, the men took Naboth out and stoned him to death, and then they 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 they, they sent and they told Jezebel that Naboth was dead. Then Jezebel, Jezebel told her husband, "Sweetheart, Naboth is dead. You can have the vineyard now." Jezebel had that man killed just because her husband wanted his vineyard. If that's not a good example of greed, I don't know what is and how sinful greed is. Go and take possession, she told neighbor. Go and take possession of it. The vineyard is, is yours. Ahab went in and his, and, and his, but they paid the price, y'all. Elder, they paid the price. They paid the price. God, God, <laughs> God sent the word to Elijah. He said, God, God I'm going to fix this right now because greed is not going to win this battle. He sent the word to Elijah the prophet and told him to go meet Ahab and confront him about killing Naboth and tell him that in the place that the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, look out. The dogs are going to lick your blood. And guess what else? He didn't stop at Naboth. At, at, uh, he didn't stop at, um, um, at Ahab now. He didn't stop there. He went to Jezebel too. Your queen wife, she's going to die the same way. The dogs are going to lick her blood and then they're going to eat her body. And it happened just as God had said. That's the danger of greed. Hmm. That's the danger of greed. Greed is a sin and the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. Mm-hmm. Whether it's power, money, sex, or covetousness, it can't be tolerated in the church. And it's got to be dealt with. And it's going to have to be dealt with by godly leaders. That means we've got to denounce greed in every area. Because, because where there's greed, every kind of evil is going to to uh, abound. So therefore, we've got to warn believers that they must return to living and communicating the truth that greed is a sure pathway to death of the spirit, death of a spiritual relationship with God, and the death of effective witness for Christ. And listen to this, the church does not want the church, I mean, the, the world doesn't want the church to reflect the same things that they have. Isn't that something? They, the world doesn't want uh, us to reflect what they are after, greed. They, I mean, they, they are sinners. So this is not applicable to them. We're talking about the church. They don't want us. They, they, they want to see the believer more ruthless than the world. 
I want you to take time and read these other passages that I have not read. First Timothy, for Proverbs 1 and 19, Habakkuk 2 and 9, Romans 1, 28 through 30, Hebrews 13 and 5, First Timothy 3, 2, 2 and verses 2 and 3, First Timothy 6 and 10, First John 2, 16, and Luke 12, 15 through 21. I hope that I've shared something with you uh, tonight as it, re as it refers to uh, greed, the sin of greed. If there are any questions, go ahead and Sister Bree will bring the questions to me and I'll do my best to answer those questions. In the meantime, uh, El Elder um, Moore is here. And Sister Jackson's here, and maybe they would have, they, maybe they want to share something about the topic that we have, have on tonight, the sin of greed. No questions? All right. Uh, well, first of all, um, what I heard so far is, is um, you know, lined up with what our Bible lesson tonight. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the sin is, is such a powerful um, thing that it has a lot of sisters and brothers that it carries with it. Mm -hmm. Greed, you know, love of money, you know, mm -hmm. our, our, um, uh, our pride. Then could get into 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 a, an individual, and there there's just so many so many ways that 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 um, um, our our bodies our our fleshly body mm -hmm. understand me can't fight it off. Right. The only way that we can use the only thing we can use to fight off our sin is um, you know repentance, which is the is the only way that we can be cleansed from okay. through Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. But greed, greed does something to an individual that when he first starts out, he might have very, very good intentions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and in that sense, he's, he's, he's greedy for the right thing. Right. Because he's using it for the right thing. Mm -hmm. But when sin gets in there, it looks good, everything mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. and then it's all becomes personal then yeah. for that individual. Mm -hmm. And when that takes place, then it's hard for him, it's hard for him to turn back, mm -hmm. turn around, mm -hmm. and stop doing what he's doing. Okay. Because then he started, you know, where he was, where he, he was making money mm -hmm. for this particular job, I'm just going to use a job. Mm -hmm. And it got real good. Mm -hmm. Then it got to where Maybe someone might have gave him a, uh, well, we call him a kickback. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody might have gave him a little something on the side. <laughs> kickback, yeah. Yeah, and he thought about, wow, man, if I can get this, mm -hmm. then what if I was to do this? And next thing you know, he starts putting it, uh, maybe taking right. something out of the out of the pot, yeah. you know, not much, and mm -hmm. putting it in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. that's where we're at everything starts to turn sour. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. greed is such a such a a, 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 a a nasty thing. And individuals that that, that become become greedy and let let the, the, mm -hmm. the sin of greed mm -hmm. take over their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's hard to fight it. Yeah. yeah. You need help. Mm -hmm. They they need help. It's contagious, yes. They they, they need help. They they're gonna have to have to repent and they have to gonna mm -hmm. come before God and mm -hmm. and, and, and ask God to change that, change their life. Mm -hmm. And 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 you remember um um when Jesus was coming through the the city and Zach Zachary Zach Zacchaeus was up in the tree. Yes. Huh? Yeah. And when <laughs> when when he got touched, he thought about all of those times that what he had did with, with, with those people's taxes and when he was overcharging them and everything, okay. remember? Okay. That was greed had to set in. Mm -hmm. you, I, you heard, you told the story about how um, 
um, Jezebel, you know, right. um, did this thing with with, with Naboth in, in, mm -hmm. in order to in order to get his property. Right. Well, Zac Z Z Zacchaeus was doing the same thing with his, with his taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. overcharging people. Mm -hmm. Understand me? And, and not 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 only that, he, he was probably um, um, charging them for things that. That wasn't he was in 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 in, in the clause that right. they were, they were you know, in, on yeah. those contracts that uh -huh. he, was, he was he was making up with yeah. and you know that it sounds just got familiar, to be good. That yeah. sounds familiar. Exactly, <laughs> it, 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 it got good. It's the, I mean, we can even bring it right home today with mm -hmm. our, our political leaders. Yes, you know. And don't put it, but just put it, our church yeah, leaders. Yeah. Well, we can, uh, some mm. of the church leaders are doing I'm going to say some, because I, I too. Hey, some of the church leaders, I, I ain't going to put them on all of them. I, no, no, we're putting it on all of them now. But some no, of the church But leaders, some of them, yeah. 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 But uh, really, um, when 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 they see see dollar signs instead of souls, mm -hmm. Bring that again. That's a grief for me. Let me say they, that again. That was when, a good point. When they see dollar signs instead of souls. Put that mic close to your mouth. When they see dollar signs instead of souls. Now, okay. <laughs> that's that's the that's the sin of greed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great sign of greed. Yeah, yeah. And I do think that um, we got some great men and women of God today. Right. That are really out there, you know, trying to win souls, and um, we know that it takes money. Right. For them to, you know, to exactly. to, to, to work the ministry, mm -hmm. we know this. Mm -hmm. But as long as they're not using the the, the 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 funds or whatever to, you know, for for personal gain, mm -hmm. and it's for to upbuild the, the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. then that's all that matters. Right. Okay. And if they want to get greedy, get greedy for for the build up God's kingdom, then yeah. go ahead on and get yeah. greedy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Elder. Appreciate it. Sister Jackson. <clears throat> that was well said. Yeah. <laughs> um, today's lesson was um, very specific and clear. Um, to have greed is a sin. Um, I think of all the means of social media, the platforms that um, grab hold of not necessarily just our younger generation, but in this modern time, social media plays a part in enticement and mm -hmm. greed and having things, technology, things at your fingertips and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think um, even when someone posts something, you know, I have a new home or a new car mm -hmm. or what, what have you, um, that can brew up other things yeah, that get is get to your head mm -hmm. and, and now you start to question mm -hmm. why you don't have and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, in addition, it poses a safety issue as mm -hmm. well because you never know who's out there watching. That's right. Um, so I think this topic is so relevant in today's uh, modern times of being careful mm -hmm. of indulging in greed mm -hmm. and not having the right intentions because mm -hmm. as our elder or spoke on it it you know it you start off with good intentions right and then the next thing you know you're on a road mm -hmm. of greed exactly to, and you're not repenting mm -hmm. or coming to church to cleanse your mm -hmm. um soul of the sins that you've committed mm -hmm. seen and unseen heard mm -hmm. and unheard mm -hmm. Um, and you can really wind up going down a deadly road. Mm -hmm. um, I think of all, like, you know, sometimes I think, oh, the lottery winners, mm -hmm. how they win the lottery and they win all that money. And you're like, oh, I, you know, I wish I, what I would do with a million dollars in the next two years you see on the news, this person is no longer on top, you know, walking mm -hmm. this earth. Right. <laughs> um, so the intention you have to really make sure that it's in alignment mm -hmm. with God and mm -hmm. you're doing what you need to do right. to gain that spiritual wealth and stay in line mm -hmm. with um, the commandments. Okay. So this is a very powerful message. You can make it applicable in any aspect mm -hmm. of your life. Okay. So it was very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the main point that we want you to, to remember that it's not just money, y'all. It's it, you. I mean, we talked about 
um, sex and and power, you know, uh, and, and of course a lot of that does. The the bottom line is money, but still, you know, we want you to know that it's just not the handling of money. It can be those things as well. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, Elder, um, I'm I'm thinking about David right now. Mm -hmm. I can see three of them that David was 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 a uh, uh, um, uh, guilty of um, power, sex, and covetousness. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But um, his power, you know. He, he 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 when he when he messed up he always um repented. repented. See, he That's always right. repented. So mm -hmm. but all all of those things right there I can see where where David was, was guilty of them. Um mm -hmm. I haven't read anywhere where he, you know, um was accused of, of, of doing anything with the money because he always tried to the 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 share with the people and he always was mm -hmm. a people person okay. except for that one time with um, Uriah's wife with, with Bathsheba yeah yeah, yeah but he was uh, uh um David was uh you know it was more than just the money you know the, and the, the one that the Bible but yeah. if you go into the history Abigail. of it you Abigail. will see yes yeah Abigail. Bathsheba yeah, and and sex was not the only thing. There was money involved in this as well. Yeah, and and you cannot dismiss the word covetousness. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Jackson and Elder Orr, for sharing with me tonight in this lesson. Those of you who are watching us, if you would like to share with us in the ministry of giving uh please notice the qr codes that's on the screen and uh we have uh paypal cash app uh easy tie and uh the last one is uh, givelify givelify that you can uh, uh use as a means of contributing to this ministry all right, so please uh, go ahead and do so right now while she has that on the screen. We will certainly appreciate your gifts to this ministry. And we also uh, want you to come and attend. Oh, yes, yes. Um, come and, att and attend our services here at uh, Trinity Church of God in Christ. We're located at 8197 North University Drive in Tamarack. We have on Sunday morning prayer at 915. Our Sunday school starts at 930. And let me tell you, our Sunday school is full of learning. It's full of good nuggets that, that will be helpful to your life. You need to come to Sunday school on Sunday morning. Oh my goodness, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. All right? Also, our morning worship starts at 11, which is at the time our man of God, our Moses, our Joshua feeds the people of God. Amen? And we want you to come and be a part of that. I also have a very special announcement. We are a part of our church is divided uh, from the national on down, uh, to, from the national to the jurisdictional, from the jurisdictional to the district, and from the district to the lower churches. Well, our district function, our district meeting, we call it, is, uh, is held this coming Thursday and Friday. And these activities will be held at uh, friendly Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, which was located, it is located rather, in um, Good, I mean, uh, Wil on Wilton Manor, right? Is that correct? In Wilton Manor, and it's located on it's, it's on Dixie Highway, on South Dixie Highway, no, no, North Dixie Highway because it's north of uh, Sunrise. Of Broward, so um, I, I, 1441 
North Dixie Highway. Okay, and Fort Lauderdale, and it's in Wilton Manor, which is a part of Fort Lauderdale. Fort 1441, North Dixie Highway, Fort Lauderdale or Wilton Manor. 33304. We look forward to seeing you even there at our district meeting. And let me give you a little go, a little nugget here. Our first lady, our preaching first lady, <laughs> will be the speaker Thursday night. And let me tell you, if you want to hear something about she is a preaching machine. And you have got to come and hear our first lady, Lady Tina Walls. She's got a word from the Lord for you. Come on out Thursday and Friday night and be a part of this district meeting. It's called the East Coast District Meet District Convention 2023. All right? God bless you, my brothers and sisters. We're ending this. I'm going to ask Elder uh, Ur to come and pray us out. Let us bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for what has been said and done tonight. Father God, we thank you for those that are viewing us by means of uh, um, the media. And, Lord, we thank them, Lord, for tuning in. And we hope that they got something out of the, out of the lesson. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing Elder Hall, amen, to be here tonight and to uh, carry out the service, Lord. Father God, continue to bless him, continue to strengthen him, continue, Lord God, to hold him in your hands, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for illuminating his service, Lord God, so that he was able to break down the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord God, we lift up our pastor and our first lady before you, and all the members here at Trinity, not only here at Trinity, but we lift up all your people before you tonight, Lord God. And Father God, we ask you to prepare to protect, and to provide. Thank you, Lord God, for our friends, our families, and our neighbors. And Father, we thank you right now for doing it. Father, as we leave this place with never your presence, we ask you, Lord God, to you be the God, you be the God, the guidance at the automobile wheels. Lord God, you be the driver, and let us get to our place, Lord God, without any hurt, harm, or danger befalling us. These are many blessings we ask in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.